Hello, 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 you amazing hackers. Hope you're all doing well today. We're going to talk a little bit about content security protection, what it entails, and a little bit about how you guys can find ways around it. So let's get right into it, shall we? Now, the first thing I wanted to talk about is what content security protection actually entails. It's pretty much just a way to prevent cross-site scripting attacks from becoming more damaging than they really are. So what you're doing with a cross-site scripting attack is you're trying to execute JavaScript. For example, you can try to steal a user's cookies, um, but you need to send those cookies somewhere. And how we usually do that is we would get uh, we would create a get URL to our own attacking server. So we would have a dangling server somewhere, a virtual private server. We would have a web server running on there and we would make a get request and we would make the parameters of that get request. Would we make the cookie, for example, get www.attacker.com slash cookie equals and then the value of the cookie. Uh, and that way we can just check all of the audit logs and we can see which cookies have been sent to us for session cookies and that kind of stuff. Now what content security protection does is it stops you from sending that get request to an external source. Um, it's pretty much like a defense mechanism which is settled by the directive uh, script source. And this directive script source can actually have a few different values. For example, it can be set to self, which would only allow scripts to be executed on the self directory. So um, that means that you won't be able to get your, your um, scripts from, for example, google.com. You, you can, for example, have an, a script that will uh, control your maps uh, on your website. You can have a widget on your website, which calls the, U, the maps API. Um, but it can require some scripts that are not on your uh, server. So you can, for example, also make this directive script source https double point slash slash scripts dot google dot com. That's also a possibility. So there are some possibilities there. Now, there are also some tricks for bypassing, of course. The directory often allows images. So that's one of the things that you can try. Um, is to just do it with an image because images are sometimes allowed to be called from external external sources. So uh, if you want to smuggle data, call an image on your website instead of just a URL like we used to and still give the parameters to that uh, request so that you can still check your audit logs. So that would be one of the options. But another one is um, dangling markup attacks, and that is something that the uh, folks at Portswigger generously provided a lab for for us so that we can have a look at it. Now, I'm not going to s solve this full lab for you guys. Um, I'm going to leave a little bit to yourselves, but we're going to talk a bit about what dangling markup actually means. And we're going to do it using this lab and also how we can use it to bypass content security protection. Now, as you can see, I have my um, attack factor here. First of all, a little bit of a word f uh, about the attack factor. As you can see, we have a change email um, over here. And in this change email, you can take a parameter email. Now, how you find this parameter has been beyond me so far. I haven't been able to find it in any other way uh, except for parameter brute forcing, but there might be a different way. And if you fill in this parameter, you get a reflected value here. So there's also a cross-site scripting attack factor in this email section. But if we look at the attack factor taken by Portswigger, we can see that they, so let's, let's dissect this real quick. They want you to go to your, um, to your exploit server they want you to insert this script and it says location equals https double point slash slash your lab dot web security academy dot net slash email. So that's the regular URL that we have. And then email equals percent 22. So it will open a tag. It will say table. It will say background uh, attribute equals. And then it will start uh, the regular call to your collaborator URL. And then you can see a question mark in the end and it doesn't end its tag. So it's opening its tag, but it's not ending it. And that's what a dangling markup attack is. 
what we're doing with this kind of a tag is we're telling it that everything behind the question mark is still going to have to get filled until you start closing your your tag so what this means is and why this is important and that's also why this matters in these labs by the way is if we inspect the element for the email here you can see that there's also a csref token which is a hidden input field now let's unhide this real quick there we go so we can see it and this csref token is a value that we need to change the email address because what they want to do is they want to use some cross-site scripting attacks to steal the csref token and then they want you to use that csref token to change the value of the email for this specific user now how do we steal this token specifically is you go to your exploit server which we have open already i'm going to clear what i have in here um, and what they want you to do is insert this script but first of all of course replace your lab id with the correct one so that's very important that you do that and then what i have already done for you guys is i've started my burp collaborator client and i'm just going to take one payload and i'm going to paste it in here now what the burp collaborator client is is it's just a dangling server on the internet that's willing to take any request like HTTPS, DNS requests, all of that. It's just a, a server and you get assigned a specific identifier to that server. So we're going to store our exploit now before we deliver it to the victim. And now if we look here in our collaborator, we can see that we have a few requests. We have a DNS request to even, but we also have an HTTP request. Now I want you to look real closely into the request to the collaborator. And as you can see, there are some extra values in here. So we made a get call to a hidden, a hidden field with the name of CSRF and a value of, and what this was doing is it was pretty much like we said, just getting, so if we go back to the labs real quick, it was using uh, the dangling markup injection attacks by just ending with a question mark and just not, um, closing our tag so it was using that kind of attack to get the csrf value csrf token value and now what port swigger wants you to do is to um, generate a csrf poc using this value so that's the csrf that's for a whole other a whole other video um, and there are also some other techniques to subvert content security protection if you guys want to know more about those let me know in the comments below and also tell me if you guys have had any problems with content security protection yourself in the wild i'm really interested to hear about that so hope i'll see you guys in the comments below now for now i would like to thank you guys all for watching and i hope i'll see you in the next video bye